Uh, today I'll be going over our safe service operations solution and kind of giving you an idea of how you can extend um, your 100 contractor out into the field to help your project management and job cost time. Now, George, uh, can you see my screen okay? Yes, I can. Perfect. So how I kind of like to start these is to kind of, you know, for those of you all who have either used it already or are kind of looking to implement safe service operations, giving a brief rundown of what that looks like and the kind of general landscape. So if you kind of look at my next slide here, you have your 100 contractor on premise here down on the left. It's on your server, it's back in the office, or however you currently have it set up. Now, via the cloud or the internet, we harness that mobility out to your users in the field, allowing your field employees to enter in daily field reports, as well as you know, job time entries, quotes, tracking information you know, with RFIs, uh, requests for proposals, all of that information allowing you to readily send it from the field back into the office. Now, what that also does is it also empowers your office users. Now they're constantly connected with what's going on in the field and there's no longer a latency between the two, providing that constant communication and ability to say, hey, person in the office, this is what we did out in the field. Can you go ahead and take care of these things for the client and send them the bill? Sage Service Operations now empowers you to get that information efficiently and quickly. And with that, if you're currently using it out in the field, you'll know that Sage Service Operations is a browser-based solution, allowing you to not only access it for computers, but from any device that you're currently using out in the field, simply by opening up a browser, logging in, and pulling up that iPad or tablet or phone and logging right into Sage Service Operations. You can also see over here on the right, if you're using it from a phone, the options turn into a button mode, allowing you to kind of finger through and select the necessary things that you want to select in regards to what you're doing out in the field. And I'll be showing a few different ways of how that looks within Sage Service Operations. That way you can kind of get a sense of what will this look like for me and how I can use this in my project management and job costing out in the field. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my Sage Service Operations. Kind of speak to this for a little bit. So right here we have our service dashboard where your admin would generally land. Take a look at what's going on for the day, any new orders, invoices, things like that. Now for your project managers, whether they're currently operating from the dashboard, they'll be either living here or from their assignments page. So the great thing with this, depending upon how you're looking to schedule out your time, if that's where you're looking to move towards or currently use, you can kind of think of this as like an Outlook calendar. You can easily see my integrated jobs over here on the left directly from 100 Contractor, whether I added in the job a minute ago or last week. This information is reading directly from 100 Contractor, mobily through a browser. So I can easily see my trap and motel, and I can take my cost codes or any type of information I have over here on the left and easily schedule it out for work for the, for the employees that I see. Now, since this is a kind of quote unquote Outlook calendar looking, you're able to customize this based upon what you want to see for your company. So whether you want to see all employees or you want specific crews, you can set that up to customize this view to make it easily for the user to specify what information they want to see right out of the gate. Now, even more so, you can set out timeframes for the different information. I just want to take a look at a specific day. I just want to look at the work for today. Or better yet, I want to schedule out two weeks in advance all the way to a month. All of that is possible with using the scheduler directly from Safe Service Operations. So you can see I can easily drag and drop information to kind of schedule out people's work, letting them know what they have to do that day, different types of events. I can stack information. I can also take this assignment and I can also extend it out further, much beyond the day, by simply pushing it further. And now it's creating those assignments for each day. So you can see how easily it is now to start to schedule and compile all this information readily available for your employees to start doing work. Now for myself, I have some work that I did earlier this morning. And there's different color codings from this scheduler providing awareness as to what's going on with your employees. White assignments will be open, red or suspended, and gray will be complete. Green will 
I'll show you later on what that looks like is what the person's currently working on now. So as these color codings change throughout the day, you can see how your employees are transitioning to their assignments. Whether, um, you know, I'm still on my first assignment and it's already two o'clock, how come Ko is not on top of it? What is he doing? Did he just forget to update his assignment or did he not show up for work? That way you're constantly keeping track and have that awareness as to what's going on with your employees. Now I can go ahead and take some time over here for my general requirements and drop it right into my schedule. Now what this is doing is it's updating my assignments on my assignments page. So you would think of this as now my person out in the field, what does this look like when I start to drop stuff into their assignments page? So from their phone or mobile device, they would log into Sage Service Operations and most of the time, depending upon their settings and security permissions, they land here directly on their assignments page telling them what to do for today. So I can see that I have my work earlier done today. I did some work on job 207, but I have my job 201 directly from here from Trapham Hotel. Now, if you're familiar with punch actions, I can immediately do that directly from here, from my assignments page. But what does this look like if I were to access this from a phone or mobile device? So if I were to look at this from an iPad out in the field, everything's kind of easy. I can finger through, take a look at the different assignments I have. I can easily select the buttons. But if I'm on a phone, I can easily access it as well. So everything's turned into buttons, making it easy for me to look through, add information directly here from my phone. So you can see how easy it is to start to track information for job costing and project management directly from a mobile device. Now I'm gonna expand this here so we can have a lot of screen real estate to work with so I can show everyone all the information I want today. So as I dip into that job assignment for Trap and Motel, job 201, the status is open and it's gonna populate the information I can start to add for my work for today. Now, generally, I kind of follow this over kind of the life cycle of the work being done. So we'll go down the list of all over here on the left. So as you're currently probably doing right now, uh, I can use punch actions to start my work, kind of get that fired up, get right on site. I can also track travel time. And these buttons do change as you start to progress with the work. So you can see my buttons now change to tell me, do I want to you know, track lunches, breaks, suspend the time if I have to go off site for a doctor's appointment and come back. All of that's also available with safe service operations to track this time. And also keep in mind with these punch actions in the background, it's accumulating that time in, in that ticker. Now that is just one way to track time on the job for project management. We also have the ability to just punch in X amount of hours for a specific job. And I'll show you that as well. So you can see over here on my left, I have my notes for my job, any kind of information indicating what I may need to know as well as easily adding in purchase orders directly from Sage Service Operations. And these purchase orders are writing back directly back to 100 Contractor. So I can easily add PO directly from here, pull in the vendor, see what I got in here, Ben and Drill. Let's say I bought a drill, seems quite obvious. And create the PO directly from Sage Service Operations which is now populating that information in 100 contractor, all mobily. So now, me as the person out in the field, I can add any applicable items if I wanted to for the purchase order. I can look up information, let's see, let's see what I got in here. Cordless drill, bought one. It was really cheap, so it was $50. Save that. Now also, I can accumulate further information before I even create my purchase order. I could take a picture of the drill itself to hold myself accountable that, you know, this is the drill I bought, this is what it was, drill. And I can add attachment directly from here. I'm gonna put, let's see, in here. Let's see, desktop, pictures. I'm gonna pick this, some nails. Let's say it's the drill. This is a drill. Now what you could also do uh, that, that I saw a client kind of keep track of the purchase orders is now I can also maybe add the uh, receipt that I used to buy. Keeping further documentation of what was uh, done for the purchase order receipt. 
And all of this is writing back to 100 contractor. So upload the attachment, got my receipt and a picture of my drill. Now, if I wanted um, the customer or the person to sign off on the actual purchase order, I can generate the purchase order report from here. Now, the purchase order report that's coming up is the canned one. You can edit, customize this however you want, but you can see how directly from safe service operations, I can capture this information right in the field. So I can have the client sign off, client. I can have contractor. And when I create this purchase order, I can attach that picture and the receipt that I took and send it off to any necessary email addresses or people back in the office that need this information right now. And when I generate this, it's creating a PDF copy of this purchase order and attaching it to the purchase order number. That way, I'm not losing any documentation of the purchase order, and I don't have to worry about holding on to those paper documents out in the field. What if I lose them? You know, am I going to keep track of them? Are they going to get ruined in the in the truck? All that's out. All that's out the door now. You don't got to worry about it. So now I have all of my attachments directly here: my purchase order copy, the picture of what I bought, and my receipt, providing you that awareness as well as efficiency with keeping track of all this information readily and easily. So now let's jump back to the job and enter in more information throughout the life cycle of the work being done throughout the day. So I got my purchase order 475. So when I hop back to the job, I can kind of show you what that looks like. 475, right there, next one in the row. Now I can also generate field reports. So I did generate a few earlier, but I can generate a brand new one today. So generate field report. It's defaulting to myself since I'm the one putting it in. I can put in a description, see a field report. 4, 12, 2018, today's date. And the and weather is defaulting based upon the address I have on my job. So that's automatically pulled in, ready to generate my field report. Now when this pulls up, the, the options on the left will change based upon what I want to show on my daily field report. So it's got my assignment that's currently being worked on right now. I can add in any applicable notes. Here it is my okay. Now, let's say instead of the assignments, I just wanted to enter in straight labor for this daily field report. I can easily select myself, but if I'm also set up as the uh, superintendent or supervisor of other employees, I can select those individuals and add them easily and readily available directly to my DFR. Let's try slab prep, pay type, regular. And these options and drop downs, um, if you currently don't see them in your safe service operations, that's simply a security permissions. And as well, if you're not currently using safe service operations, this information is easily um, edited based upon the employee's login. And I can save that labor. Now, once that saves, I can go ahead and enter in, you know, additional, maybe a subcontractor showed up. Let's see. Let's see who showed up. Heating, arrival time, let's say 6, 7, 16 a.m. They were only here a minute to say hi. Employee count, they stop by. And save. So I'm compiling all of this information under daily field report number 13. And I'll also show you directly in 100 contractor how that's tying back directly. So you're no longer having to worry about tracking any types of paper out in the field. I can also track any type of incidences, go who fell down at 7.18 a.m. But he got back up. And if your if your company is any, doing any types of safety meetings first thing in the morning, you can track that on your DFR safety meeting description first thing in the morning. I was there, George, Jay, and Kate. I can also add additional equipment, units, information. Let's add some equipment. So we use the forklift description, we use this. I can assign a Costco for this equipment usage. Uh, let's say reframing, save equipment. 
with that I did not put in operated time on. There we go. Sure. Now at this point with my daily fuel report, just like my purchase order, I can add job photos or attachments directly from here. So I can add in maybe job here, job site, add attachment. I can provide further descriptions as well as I can easily pull up that photo and let's say I kind of wanted to mark it up to kind of show this is where a certain pump or we're going to put you know a slab here so when I pull in this image once it loads it'll allow me to kind of start to draw on it you know let's say we're going to put the slab here or we're going to put a tree here depending upon what's going on for that day here there all available for me to edit directly from here now whether you're tracking job photos, documents, all of that is now able to attach directly to the daily field report and accumulate the information. So I got my attachments here. I can also email this content directly if I needed to, right directly from Sage Service Operations to someone in the office requesting it. But now, let's say I want to kind of compile everything and tie it all together. So under reports, I, I can create my daily field report. We also have custom forms you can set up within Sage Service Operations. So if you have a piece of paper or a specific form out in the field your company uses to track information, you can easily set up that form in Sage Service Operations so that it's readily available for you to fill out for your employees in the field. Now, I'm ready to create my daily field report, and it's going to generate much like how my purchase order generated, and this is completely customizable. You can put your company's logo up here, uh, you know, hide information show information so it's got my you know assignment time is still running up there it's got my labor that i punched in my subcontractor the injury i had but i got back up my meeting all that information directly on my dfr and all of these additional items are also customizable got my customer here my project manager sign off and the super except and just like my purchase order, it's generating this attachment in a PDF form available for me to preview and save service operations, but also tying this attachment back to daily field report number 13 and 100 contractor. So I can pull up that PDF in the office and take a look at, oh, you know, go who did uh, DFR number 13, and this PDF will show up directly 100 contractor and I can easily pull it up on my browser as well. Now additionally, if I hop back to my job, what else can I put on here? I've got my RFI information I can enter in, which I'll do so now. And once we kind of tie all this together, we can kind of show what it looks like back in 100 contractor. So let me just add RFI. I can indicate a phase if I wanted to, any vendor information, attention description, and the note. So we'll put it in here, vendor, vendor number one. Let's put it here, HO. Pull in, mic excavating. Let's see, concrete pumping. Okay, phase, I'll select England for now. Description. Need info. And I can add additional type of notes in here. And if you're not currently using it already, um, keep in mind that any notes field within Sage Service Operations has the ability to use the uh, talk to text uh, for directly from the mobile device so you don't have to keep typing out the information. Simply enable the microphone and talk to text all the information you need. So you can see I've created my RFI number two here with all the necessary information I might want to associate. All of my information, pulling this all information requested. I can easily update this information if need be. What do I do with this stuff? Or any kind of information you're looking for, indicating, you know, how am I going to generate this and get this back into 100 contractor? Just a plan change. I can update that easily. Also, much like my daily field report and purchase order, say I needed a picture to provide some, you know, this is what we're wanting to change. You know, what is this? You know, why is this here? Uh, number. Just providing visual awareness that you may not have now so that, you know, 
the field is constantly communicating, hey, we got this, you know, I attached the picture to the RFI, can you take a look at it in the office? Rather than going off a of word, I can easily attach a photo and upload that for the people in the office or whoever has access to this RFI now. So now when I go back to my job and accumulate that information, for RFI number two, I've got my RFI number two. Now also keep in mind when I'm on this job level, all of this is compiling throughout the life cycle of the job. So all the attachments that are pulling in, I can easily pull up in here and have a sketches information all readily available directly from this job. Now at this point is where I kind of transition over to 100 contractor to kind of show you where all this is going. All this information is great mobily and it looks like it's inter interfacing. I want to see what that looks like in 100 contractor. So if I pull up my 100 contractor here, I apologize as I thought I had the window open earlier. There we go. So much like back in the office, here's your 100 contractor. Where is all this information going? You know, so specifically for my documents under, you know, my 6, 11, 6, I got my daily field reports, my RFIs, as well as that maybe that purchase order that I enter. So for my purchase order, going into 661, I can kind of shoot forward and ahead. There's my drill. So just like that, directly from the field, there's zero latency now. They're requesting the purchase order. I'm tracking the information. If I pulled up my attachments. Oh, there's my drill picture, my receipt, and the purchase order. Directly in 100 contractor, no delay. Right there. This alone has saved a ton of money for clients as far as keeping track of in, all the information less stressful for everyone involved. The person out in the field no longer has to worry about losing anything. Take a picture in SSO, attach the information, done. And the person in the office no longer has to worry about keeping track of everything. Because now there's a digital footprint of everything going on within Sage Service Operations and tying back to your 100 contractor. So that's great. We got the purchase order it's sitting out there now. So we also did a uh, RFI. Take a look, drop them. Oh, our file number two, need more inform information. What do I do with this stuff? And again, there's my attachments of that picture for that uh, information that's applicable to what's going on directly in 100 contractor. Got my plan change checkbox that I used and checked on the information to update. And also my daily field report directly here. If I go to my last one, there it is. And also remember on my daily field report, I not only selected myself, but I also selected additional employees. So you can see how the information is accumulating within here. There's a subcontractor I selected, they stop by. That piece of equipment that I added with a forklift, as well as that incident where I fell down, but I got back up. All directly in 100 contractor without any delay. I also have that safety meeting that I put in with uh, me, George, Jay, and Kate this morning, first thing. Now, again, all of the information I have in my system is kind of canned in default. Sage Service Operations has the ability to completely customize a lot of this information to make it specific for your company while harnessing the power of the cloud and its mobility pieces so it ties back to your 100 contractor. 